Welcome. This is the big story of the day and a case that has only had twists and turns. Former media tycoon turned murder accused Indrani Mukherjee, who's currently behind bars, has made a sensational claim now about her daughter, Sheena Bora, who remember, she, Indrani, is accused of strangulating to death, allegedly. Mukherjee has now written a letter to the Central Bureau of Investigation claiming that this daughter, Sheena Bora, is actually alive and possibly is living in Jammu and Kashmir. Indrani has told CBI that she had recently come across one woman in prison who had claimed she had met Sheena Bora in the Kashmir Valley. Apart from this letter, she has also moved an op application before the special CBI court, which is likely to come up also soon for hearing. Indrani now wants the CBI to go find her daughter. Indrani Mukherjee has been lodged in the Baikula prison in Mumbai since arrest in 2015 in this murder case. Probe officials have revealed that Indrani had a hidden identity of Sheena Bora, who was born from one of her earlier marriages. And that uh, with regard to now describing her also as uh, her sister to the other kids in the family. So it is now alleged that Sheena Bora was killed when she started seeking share in properties from Indrani Mukherjee as an adult. And now listen in to this exclusive interview. The daughter of Indrani and Peter Mukherjee, Vidhi Mukherjee, spoke to India today. Here's an excerpt on what she had to say and what she told me about Indrani Mukherjee, her mother. In 2015, Indrani Mukherjee and Peter Mukherjee became a household name for uh, charges of murder of her daughter, Sheena Bora, a case, a scandal that even today sends shockwaves across the country. While the case is still subjudice, caught in the whirlwind of that shocking case was a young girl. She had just turned 18 when first her mother and then her father were taken into arrest. Years later, she has decided to pen her book. Her name is Vidhi Mukherjee. She joins us today on India Today to speak her heart out. And uh, Vidhi, welcome. I hope uh, you have been fine and you've had uh, to come to terms with so much since you turned 18. The book that Vidhi Mukherjee has written is titled The Devil's Daughter. How are you, Vidhi? Um, thank you so much, Pooja, for having me here. It's a pleasure being on that. So, let's just start with one of the most important aspects of your book, because it's titled The Devil's Daughter. It says, speaks so much about Indrani Mukherjee, but what I saw was two different Indranis. Your relationship with Indrani Mukherjee oscillating between, as you write, an unbelievably nasty, manipulative, shouting, you had to close your ears, Indrani, as a mother who you rebelled. And in Indrani, a mother you want to understand. This is despite serious charges of murder against her. How was your relationship with Indrani Mukherjee while you were growing up? Did you think that there were any sorts of unexplained behavior issues that you also had to cope up with her? So, I truly believe that, you know, my mother, she had a lot of pent up emotions and a lot of things that she probably needed to resolve herself. So I think a lot of that stress was imposed onto me. And, you know, by no means was I a easy kid. I was quite like opinionated and stubborn. So I think that attitude of mine probably resulted in a lot of arguments, you know, and there was a quite, quite a lot lost in translation. What, what kind of relationship did you have? Because what I read through the book was that there was definitely a vision that she wanted you to be and you were not okay with that. Yeah, so I mean, I don't think, uh, I think writing off my previous answer, it's, you know, how I was as a kid. She did envision a future for me, which was yes. down that kind of checklist life, you know, of having a job, finishing university and eventually kind of head down a corporate structure. So we really didn't meet eye to eye on many of those things because as a kid, I was quite free spirited. And uh, I was very creatively inclined and eventually we both clashed on our beliefs, you know. So she she kind of rid on stability quite a lot. Whereas for me, I believe that it's it's not necessary to kind of have stability and precision 24 times, 24-7 in your life. 
Why do you think that uh, you want to understand someone now? Do you think there have been enough years in a water under the bridge that you've had time to think over it? I mean, not really. I don't think it's water under the bridge. I think it's a natural human instinct for a daughter to kind of understand her mother, you know, and especially given my situation, uh, it's extenuating circumstances, you know, that me and my mom, we haven't seen each other in six years. She has no idea who I am. And essentially, it's this book was like a really long letter to her. So, of course, I want to understand her. But what I also... Uh figured out from the book, uh, Vidhi, is that you seem very sceptical of Indrani Mukherjee, who's your biological mother. You decided to even cut off from her. Why did you decide to cut off from Indrani for about three years? While throughout the book, you seem uh, very affectionate and uh, you have words of love, respect, admiration, honesty for Peter Mukherjee, your father. So why was that difference in the relationship that you felt for both? Yeah, um, I understand why people, you know, want to compare my relationship with my mom and my dad. But to me, it's it's not really necessary, you know, because I don't, for me, I, I don't believe in the word like step. It's not in my dictionary. He is my father and he's raised me since I was a child, you know. He gave me everything above and beyond and I know him as a man. That's why I can vouch for him. And with my mother, like I said, I, I feel like I don't know her anymore. And uh, it's, you know, I truly believe in giving her a chance to kind of understand her and for her to understand me. You know, I would like to be there for her as she really doesn't have anyone. And um, hopefully I can kind of get through her. But Vidhi, there would be one question on everyone's mind. And this is when your one parent is accused for murder, another of conspiracy. Both are very serious charges of a young girl, a case that dates back to 2012. Why do you think that your version also deserves to be heard? Why do you think that at this point, because many would, would say that what if this book is, is perhaps because what if this book has come as a defense for either of your parents or both of your parents while the case is still on? I mean, that's their opinion. It's, it's not really why I wrote the book. And I think anyone who reads the book will kind of see that message very clearly. You know, it's, uh, it's, I've spoken from my heart. I've spoken about, I haven't even really spoken about anyone else but my journey. Yes. And I, I understand the protagonist is me. And, you know, the main characters are my family, my mom, my dad. But I would truly think it's about the bigger picture. When someone reads this book, I want them to question themselves. I want them to question the society that we live in, you know, our conditioning. So I haven't written this book, you know, for a plea of sympathy or for kind of defending either of my parents. It's, it's exactly what happened. And I'm not trying to give a story to someone. I'm, I'm trying to take them on a journey with me. How was your equation with, uh, with your mother? Because why do you think if, if the relationship was at, a, at still a level, as, as you've said, it was not the best, but you were still comparatively close to your parents and especially to your mother. Why do you think then she hid the fact that, that Sheena Bora was, was actually your sister, her daughter, though she was introduced as an aunt to you? Yeah, I mean, I, I can't really answer that because I, I haven't quite understood that in my own life. You know, that's something I'm still trying to figure out. And uh, the, there's a lot of aspects that I haven't confronted. There's, you know, there's the book is one part, but topics like Sheena, topics like, you know, why I, I it's very hard for me to still confront. So I, I can't really give a um, articulate answer on that. But because most of us, in fact, any of us have only heard of Sheena Bora as a woman who is no more and was uh, was possibly killed and was allegedly killed by Indrani Mukherjee. But did you know Sheena enough? Did you like her? Tell us about who this girl was that, that was spoken about so much just about a few years ago and of which perhaps we all are still waiting for some closure by the investigation. Yeah, so I mean, I think there's a reason why the public don't know about Sheena a lot and know about our family a lot because I think the media chose to focus on a few irrelevant aspects rather than, you know, actually understanding Sheena's life then. But for me, I mean, I was a kid. I was I was yes. nine or ten years old and 
I, I loved her. I mean, everyone loved her. She was she was stunning. She was so intelligent. You know, she was she was amazing in every kind of aspect. And uh, I, there's not a day that goes by without me thinking, you know, what would it have been like if she was still in my life today? What does uh, a whirlwind scandal when your parents get arrested at 18 do to a girl that, that young when you have a life ahead of you but you have serious charges against your parents? How did your life really change? How did you cope up with all that was happening right then and there? Yeah, uh, you know, I'm intensely grateful to the fact that I had a lot of opportunities and was given all of that because of all my, all, all of it was because of my parents, you know. But what's it like after? I mean, much of this answer is greatly detailed in my book. You know, the privilege doesn't mean anything when the most important people from my life were taken away. And I'm talking about my father, Sheena, and my mother, you know. Um, I was completely alone for five years and granted I chose to be that way but it took so much out of me and but what this journey has given back to me is almost indescribable you know it's 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 a blessing so I, I don't regret any of it. In your book you write I remember being carried and waking up in a hospital with froth on the t-shirt uh, referring to the fact that you had gone into depression you had panic attacks uh, you also attempted to take your own life. Why did you feel that, you know, the fact that you survived it was perhaps the moment you need to change, that you couldn't really give in to what was happening and perhaps that is when, it was that the lesson that you got when you managed to find yourself waking up in a hospital and not really getting drowned into all that was happening? Absolutely. I mean, um, you know, the as cheesy as it sounds, I think the fact that I woke up that day and I was not expecting to, you know, kind of really told me something internally that I need to fix myself, I need to fix my surroundings, you know, I need to kind of get grounded and really understand what's going on. And uh, because previously, the first two years when all of this happened, I was just escaping. And I thought I was an anomaly, that I didn't have to feel any of these emotions and it would just kind of go away, but the bubble always bursts. So uh, once the bubble did burst, I kept kind of going downhill, you know, the trajectory was just down and down and down until that day. And after that, I was, I really worked, worked hard on myself. I really kind of understood the true, true meaning of solitude, you know, took some time out, didn't speak to anyone, not even my family members and uh, just focused on knowing who I am as a person. Are you angry at your mother, Vidhi, for all that you had to go through? I mean, I was, of course. I think when all of this happened, I was uh, furious. You know, that rage turns into uh, depression as it did. And then that, you know, kind of the depression and the anger turned into just, you know, feeling sorry for myself. And when you're at that point, I, I didn't have any more hate to give. You know, once I woke up from the hospital, I didn't, I didn't want to hate anyone or anything else. So I really thought I needed my mom back in my life because I thought I needed to give her a chance. I needed to hear her out. And I don't care what other people, you know, think or if they judge me, whether I'm, you know, back in contact or kind of having a relationship with my mom. But it's for me to figure out. But I do want to understand, and if you can say that to uh, the viewer watching as well, what was what was that about Indrani Mukherjee that that really bothered you in the sense that that you wish you would have asked more questions, that you would have been able to. Many would ask, why did you believe if you were told that Sheena Bora has gone away if you were so close? So I'm trying to understand what led to the fact that that you wanted to believe all of that when, of course, it all turned out to be lie in so many ways? Actually, we don't know a lot of it because a lot of these are just also facts that have, uh, you know, kind of fabrications that have been said in the media. We, I, have, I have no idea what has happened. And uh, even, even back then, I don't know as a kid, if, if I was 23 years old when that happened, I probably would have asked more questions. I would have definitely, you know, said something. And this is something I ask myself every then and again, you know, why didn't I ask any questions? Why didn't anyone? And again, it's an answer. I just, I just don't know because I haven't kind of, you know, faced it. I haven't understood it. And for that, I need to understand my mom first. 
In your book, you write a lot of forgiveness had to be given, a lot of anger and pain had to be let go. There are things my mom has done, things I will not be able to forgive her for. But I've taken a path to give her a chance. I believe every single person deserves it. Why do you think Indrani Mukherjee would deserve a chance if uh, she's facing these allegations of murder of her own daughter who she hid from her family? Why do you think she deserves a chance? I'm, j I'm not some random person that's giving her a chance. I'm her daughter, you know, and she, for that, I whatever it is, good, bad, ugly, like, I, I don't know the truth. I don't know anything. I can't say that I know one single thing. You know, everyone in the world is shouting, this happened, that happened. I'm sitting here saying I really don't know anything. And mom, you know, I'm I'm giving her a chance to kind of tell me what happened or anything. I just I, I want to start somewhere. And uh, yeah, she's my mother. I don't I don't believe on just kind of she has no one right now apart from me. And I wouldn't be able to live with myself if I just kind of, you know, abandoned her again. What what happened when you decided to not reply to her for three years and then you landed up at the prison, at the Baikula prison and meet her? What was that interaction like? I needed her. I really, I really needed her because it was one of the toughest moments of my life. I, I needed to know that there were people who loved me because I alienated myself from every single person that was around me apart from my father and by virtue I needed my mother. And uh, it's it's not pleasant at all, you know, when you're visiting your parent in jail, it's 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 literally horrifying, and uh, the memories still haunt me. So you're 24 right now. I think the same age when uh, Sheena Bora was last heard from, and uh, then you know then she died. The case is still on. We cannot discuss the legality of the case. But now that you find yourself at that juncture, how do you look back at all these years? Do you, what do you think should have been different for you to have? Do you think there should have been truth spoken to you right at the beginning? Perhaps that would have saved you a lot of time, heartache and the disaster that you had to deal with alone. Yeah, I mean, obviously, I think everyone would have benefited from some truth, you know. But again, between truth or lies, we really don't know much of it. The case is sub -judice. I, I don't know many details from back then, firstly, because I've probably chosen not to remember it. And secondly, it's it's really traumatizing for me, you know. So I, I'm, I'm focusing on the now. I'm not really focusing on what could have been back, done back then, because that, I think that would just make me go crazy if I did. Are you, uh, apart from your anger that I'm sure you still face and you're trying to come to terms with it, for all that tumultuous time that you faced, do you think you've come out stronger? Do you, but importantly, with that strength, do you think there's lack of trust now? Do you think someone like you or someone in your position would understandably not trust that easily when you, when you see people around you so close, realizing that not not uh, the truth was spoken to you do you think that is what you face sometimes feel sometimes no i mean i have a very optimistic way of looking at life now you know i think uh, i am i'm i'm naturally now quite trusting than i was before you know before i didn't trust anyone but now i know what it's like when people kind of come help you and are there with you like my friends are my family you know and uh, i have began to look at everything more optimistically and positively which i think is helping me a great deal and just few final questions before we wrap up this discussion what do you see now here on what what do you want how the how would the situation be different what would you want uh, to you know, we, we are again not discussing the case but the fact that you've been meeting your mother how is how has that relationship come along from an angry rebellious not at its best to perhaps at some level trying to figure out because you also speak uh, you've written about the abuse that Indrani Mukherjee faced you also speak about the honesty that your father had it's it's a very heartfelt book but to keep all of that aside and come to terms with what's been happening how do you see now the next few years for you while your mother is still in jail and while the father is out on bail and the case is still on I mean, I don't expect anything to happen, you know, I'm not wishing for, of course, I hope this all kind of gets cleared up very soon, but I don't have any expectations. For me, it's, if I can live as presently, then that will suffice, you know, and that that's all very dependent on day by day. And I think uh, I have a lot of hope for mine and my mother's relationship. 
and for her to understand me and for me to understand her you know if it's not meant to work out it's not meant to work out but i'm taking it day by day as it comes and what would what is one lesson that you want to tell us that you've had from all of this because i remember your visuals uh, at the court i remember uh, some of the statement that you had to release uh, that was also telecast on india today and that you had a lot to say even back then now do you think that that has changed that you you would rather write a book think it over and then mention it or because what i'm trying to figure out is how does an 18 year old to a 24 year old which is such an essential part of our life has managed to grow up with all of that happening because i don't want to take away from the fact that there are serious charges and investigators had filed charge sheet as well but what how does a young girl a child of such serious allegations being faced by parents manage to keep her keep her sanity all through this time i didn't keep my sanity at all i mean like this the the last 6 years was so up and down i wasn't I, i wouldn't call myself sane by any means for the first couple of years you know it took it took a great deal of work and healing and processing actually more than anything it was a really up and down journey and um, i'm so grateful to it more than anything because when you're faced with a traumatic situation to such a large scale there are two ways one can go with this one is either delve into it or one is escape and you're going to intertwine those ways somehow or the other you know and if i had to really give one piece of advice that i've learned through this whole thing is is try and understand the true meaning of empathy because uh, my true healing journey started when i understood what it's like to feel other people's you know pain and uh, i really had to bear the brunt of a lot of criticism and judgment to understand that sure. i should be judging um and yeah just embrace your quirky and weird self i think that's just so important we we're, we're kind of all so repressed and you know shunned and feel ashamed to actually be but, our true selves yes but i i do have this to ask that you know i understand what you're saying empathy and considering you must have faced a lot of criticism there's no denial about that and some of it uh, a lot of it would be unwarranted at some level for you but do you think with when there is a murder being investigated that empathy for those alleged individuals would be the way to go we're also talking about a 24 year old girl sheena bora who who was killed and for 3 years people had no idea about it yeah i think i think empathy is needed in every single situation i think uh, even the worst of the worst deserve some sort of empathy because look sympathy and empathy are two different yes. things that the you know what you said kind of uh, resonates with sympathy but empathy is something when you put yourself in someone else's shoes and try and understand what the other person was going through which is how i began to kind of understand my mom and decided to get back in touch with her because i really kind of felt what she might have gone through as a kid this been all these things didn't just stem off stem out of nowhere it all started when she was 4 5 years old and she because of her situation and what happened to her it's not normal i mean it makes you a stone it literally you know you have cages in front of you and no one can penetrate you're talking that. about the sexual abuse that she uh, appears to have faced it's not only sexual abuse i think her entire life was pretty hard i think she had to fight a lot to get to where she, where she where she was and yes i'm not condoning anything but i'm just saying empathy is important i don't think okay. for anyone no matter who it is i think have a little bit of empathy and try understanding their side and i'm not asking anyone i'm i'm saying it purely for myself you know i'm her daughter and so. and before i forget to ask you've titled it the devil's daughter isn't that a stand that you're taking calling yourself the devil's daughter it's not myself i mean it doesn't relate to any specific person it's the devil's daughter is a metaphor and it's a metaphor for how i felt that i was looked at by the media uh, the law the a society and ultimately my own self you know there's no specific tangible person that's the devil and i think to understand the true meaning of what this title means one has to read the book fully all right and uh, all i want to say is i think it's ending on a good note that you still want to have empathy despite all that you've faced you've been very brave to have uh, confronted your demons and have written this book as well i wish you all the very best vidhi mukherjee thank you so much for speaking to india today